and more civilians being killed as Russia escalates its attacks here. People trying to flee the invasion struck at an evacuation crossing point. Twice, Russia and Ukraine agreed to ceasefires in order to give people a chance to get out. Both times, Russia broke the ceasefires with violent, indiscriminate shelling. <laughs> At least four people, including a woman and her two children, were killed in that attack. We will not forgive, we will not forget Ukraine's President Zelensky vows to punish Moscow's troops as he reacts to the killing of civilians attempting to flee the conflict. We will find every who was shot at our cities, our people. There will be no quiet place on this earth for you, except for the grave. Sweet Jesus, this is insane. Like, it's bad enough that Russia is blowing Ukraine to smithereens. But it's even worse that they're bombing people who are trying to escape during a ceasefire that Russia agreed to. I mean, wh wh what's, what's Russia's logic here? I, don't, I honestly don't get it. What is it? First we murder the people, then they'll warm up to us as their new rulers? What's the plan? And today, after attacking civilians during the first two evacuation attempts, Russia offered to create new humanitarian corridors to allow people to escape these cities. Except, and you can't make this part up, many of the evacuation routes would funnel civilians straight into Russia. Which is insane. Like, just think about that for a moment. People are trying to escape, and you're like, we'll let them escape, but into our country. Like, imagine hostage takers saying, all right, we'll let the hostages leave. We'll let them leave the bank, but only if they come with us to our house. Then they're still hostages. Are you insane? I mean, not to mention, even refugees probably don't want to live in Russia right now. I mean, things aren't great in Ukraine, but at least they still get the Batman. There's nothing in Russia. And because many Russians have family members who are living in Ukraine, the idea of the Russian military leveling Ukrainian cities and killing innocent people was never going to be popular in the first place, which is probably why Putin has now gone into overdrive to make sure that in Russia, nobody hears about it. Well, a new Iron Curtain has fallen in Russia, and this time it's an information Iron Curtain. That's why most Russians don't know what's really happening in Ukraine. The Kremlin today blocked Facebook and Twitter, and there are no independent media outlets left. Vladimir Putin signing a law tonight making it a crime to spread what the Russian government considers fake news about the conflict in Ukraine. The maximum penalty, 15 years in jail. Independent Russian news outlets have always found it difficult to operate. Now, it's impossible. The staff at Moscow's last independent TV station walking off set as their final symbolic broadcast played out. A similar scene played out at Russia's oldest liberal radio station, Echo of Moscow, which says it's been forced to close. We just can say welcome to the USSR. Yeah, just think about that for a moment. The only place to get any news in Russia now is state media. That's it. Putin even shut down Facebook in Russia, which is so messed up. Like, why couldn't he have shut it down everywhere? Why only in Russia? This man's truly evil. We also want to break from Facebook. I mean, on the plus side, the one silver lining of this is that everyone is getting the exact same news in Russia, which means Russian family dinners are probably gonna be, like, the least contentious affairs ever. Especially way more than American family dinners. Well, I heard the war in Ukraine is going well. Oh, yeah? I heard the same thing. Yeah, more stuffing, please. Happy Thanksgiving, we're Russians together, enjoying same news so we don't disagree. They sing during Thanksgiving in Russia. You can't prove that I'm not lying because there's no Facebook there anymore.